Bilderberger Burgers reconvenes in person <laughs> after a two year pandemic gap. Isn't that good? Finally, you know, it's just not the same trying to wreck the world over a Zoom. It's just not the same. You got to get together. And, so they got together. Do you know who the Bilderberger Burgers are? After a pandemic gap of two years, the elite, the, they're an elite global summit. That's what the Bilderberg is, an elite global summit. It's being rebooted in a security-drenched hotel in Washington, D.C., with a high-powered guest list that includes the heads of NATO, the CIA, the GCHQ. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> the U.S. National Security Council. Two European prime ministers, a healthy sprinkling of tech billionaires, huh. and Henry Kissinger. <laughs> wow. Now, is, Hen the is the WEF like for punks and this is the good one? I mean, is that what that is? I, I think so. I think the WEF must be there to, to distract you from this one. This is the real one. Back in 2019, the last time Bilderberg met in the flesh. The conference kicked off with the optimistic topics, a stable strategic order. And what what's next for Europe this year? However, the agenda reeks of chaos and crisis. Top of the schedule is the blandly terrifying item, global realignments, followed by NATO challenges, the biggest of which is obviously Ukraine. Other topics included Ghislaine Maxwell. Should she commit suicide on her own or with some help? Since when another topic, since when is everyone entitled to insulin? Another topic, Ukraine, more like our crane. Am I right? <laughs> okay. I will. I need everyone to in the room to focus on what I'm telling a joke. <laughs> Kurt, if you could laugh at the jokes that you've written, that would be helpful to the segment. Oh, did I freeze Us or something? Usually, usually the writer of the joke is the biggest laugher in the room. But you're doing uh, the I silent did. laugh today. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, you want to you want to hear some more topics at yes. the Bilderberg? James Corden. Why did we make him a star again? That's another topic. Who who do we got a bomb to have enough lithium? That was for an afternoon session. <laughs> Eyes wide open. The future of orgy masks. I can't wait to attend that one. Uh, no, seriously, just between us. What is a woman? That's one. That's on the di that's on the agenda. They decide that at Bilderberg. <laughs> Bilderberg's going to decide what a woman is. To be sure, the Washington conference is a high-level council of war, headlined by the Secretary General of NATO, Bilderberg veteran Jens Stoltenberg. He's joined at the Jens. Oh, the name is Jens. Jens, I bet. Jens. Or, oh, it's probably Jens. Okay, Jens. Okay. Come on, get it right. Sorry. I'm sorry. He's joined two gens. He's joined at the luxurious Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Gens is every woman I went girl I went to college with. Okay. A lot of gens, probably. A lot of gens. Come on. He's joined at the luxurious Mandarin Hotel. Oriental Hotel. You can't I don't think you can say that. By the Ukrainian <laughs> ambassador to the US, Oksana Makarova. And the CEO of Natugaz, the state-owned Ukrainian oil and gas. Really? Look at all the people that are there. Wow. Hang on. I think I had a joke for this. No? No. God damn it. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, no, this is, these are all the wrong. Okay. Sorry. This is very unprofessional of me. Did I already get rid of it? Yes, I did. Sorry. Okay. The Bilderberg. So here we are. Uh, to, so, okay. The conference room is rigged up with video screens for sh shy dignitaries to make a virtual attendance. And it's highly likely the Ukraine's president, Voldemort Zelensky, will zoom in for a T-shirted contribution to the talks. I, I got to say, I do respect Zelensky for always being in a T-shirt for some reason. I don't know why that is, but he is. Just a few days beforehand, Zelensky met with a Bilderberg and U.S. intelligence representative, Alex Karp, who runs Plant Palantir, the infamous CIA-funded surveillance and data analyst company. 
Palantir, which was set up by billionaire Bilderberg insider Peter Thiel, has agreed to give digital support to the Ukrainian army, according to a tweet by the country's deputy prime minister. Wow, Planeter, that's named after that evil crystal ball from the Lord of the Rings that solely corrupts its users. Of course, that's just, that's just a fantasy novel. In real life, they started out evil and corrupt. Just keep that in mind. Bilderberg is sometimes dismissed as a talking shop or crazed imagining of conspiracy theorists. But in reality, it is a major diplomatic summit attended this year as ever by extremely senior transatlantic politicians from the U.S. Commerce Secretary, from the U.S. Commerce Secretary to the President of the European Council. Wow! You see, it's not a bunch of secret lizards. <laughs> lizards are actually less vicious and greedy. <laughs> Max Blumenthal tweeted out, "I attempted to enter D.C.'s Mandarin Oriental Hotel, secret site of the Bilderberg meeting. CIA Director Burns, NSC Principal Sullivan and Gamble, Pfizer CEO Barula, <laughs> Peter Thiel, Kissinger, and media elites are there to discuss Ukraine and the global economy entirely off the record." Well, what's the big deal, Max? The most powerful people in the Western Hemisphere are just getting together to decide the fate of their hemisphere. Why don't you try working hard and buying your own hemisphere, Max Blumenthal, instead of tearing down job creators? <laughs> or the risk takers. The risk Dis take. That's right. They're definitely disruptors. They're disrupting their own economies. I mean, so here is disruptors. That's right. That's why they call themselves disruptors. So here, here is uh, Max trying to get into the hotel. It looks. I'm actually surprised you got to get this close. This is kind of so they got they got the the fencing up, but the fence is open for a brief moment, and Max, the journalist, makes a break for it. And he gets all the way in. Watch how far he gets. I got past the bomb dog. Oh, really? Because you didn't have a bomb. Who's this guy? So they see him. Now they got him. Hey. Green squad. Here comes the green squad. Yeah, you have one. Is it? Do I need a lanyard to go see reservations? So I need to. need a white lanyard. So he would, you're just trying to walk into a hotel in D.C., at, to go up to reservations and they stop you so you can't come in. Okay. And now the guy's going to tell you he doesn't even know who he's doing this for. For the Bilderberg meeting of national security and big tech elites meeting in secret to discuss Ukraine. Sure, I need to step off the property. You don't know who you're doing security for? Okay. So they don't even tell you who you're working we have for. No idea. So that's how secretive the Bilderberg is. No so none of you know who, who's inside. It's not a meeting of national security and big tech elites to discuss Ukraine and the global economy off the record. <laughs> it's not. Oh, see, now you made him close the gate, Max. I hope you're happy. Now nobody. The only, the only other reporter there is well, allegedly pissed. everyone from Peter Thiel to members of National Security Council, NATO officials, uh, big tech people like. So they just put a fence around the entire hotel, Max. That's what they did. The entire hotel was reserved, and a giant fence was on all sides of it. It was surrounded with these goon squads of guys in black suits talking into their sleeves. And then they had DC Metro police out there as well as a kind of outer ring. And the, yeah, the entire hotel was booked officially under the Hong Kong government. That was the official cover story. Okay. Can you, can you imagine if they had that kind of force on January 6th? Uh, yeah. You know, after it showed <laughs> up on the old Palantir? <laughs> Oh, why didn't they have that kind of security at the at the Capitol building on January 6th? They would have never gotten. So here's what you also tweeted. You said at this man's response to at this man's response to me makes clear Bilderberg participants and security were barred from disclosing the location of the meeting and from quoting anyone during the uh, off the record sessions. The entire Mandarin Ho Orient Hotel was reserved and blocked off for the event. Here's another. Uh, you, you gonna try to make a break for it? Security right here. 
and some sedans. Wow, look at that. They're not letting anyone that way for the Bilderberg meeting. <laughs> were you in the Bilderberg meeting? Yes, you were in the Look Bilderberg this guy. meeting. I don't, know. don't know. Were you in the every everybody turns it into a mental defective immediately? You see that? I huh? Yeah. I don't know. Where? What am I doing with a lanyard and a suit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why can't you just lie? lie? Yes, it's an off-the-record meeting. I know, and it's secretive, but. Can you turn your lanyard around? <laughs> Hi, Max Blumenthal. Were you? Wow. Wow. So that guy tried to intimidate why, you. Why won't anyone say? Yeah. It seems undemocratic. I mean, these are people who decide, have a huge influence on policy. They're talking about a war right now that could turn into a, a world war. A nuclear war. And they won't even say what they're saying. That's democracy. No. That's this is the, and many of them uh, claim to be democratically elected leaders, but they're meeting in secret with leaders of multinational corporations and big tech and the defense industry. That was, oh, oh, I wish it kept going. I like watching that guy just stand there trying to pretend that he's the dumbest guy in the world. That was funny. Um, can I just say that yeah. uh, uh, to uh, you know the good folks watching through Palantir, I had nothing to do with anything that I did. <laughs> I don't endorse it. See any reason why you need to be bothered on your your day trying to just relax? And, Today's uh, show is brought to you by the fine <laughs> people at Palantir, keeping <laughs> America's elite safe. For Tell the Mr. Bilderberg, I, I mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know why it's so secret? Is because they're they're avoiding Klaus Schwab. I I totally I would totally accept it if they said, "Hey, look, we're creeped out by Klaus Schwab too. He just always shows up. We don't know how." You ever see that movie What About Bob? It's just like that except Bob if Bob looked like Rupert Murdoch melting. That would that's what <laughs> Just please don't tell him about this. But I don't think Klaus Schwab was there. He's the WEF guy, right? Was well, he there, his, Max? His mentor was there who helped kind of sustain and grow this meeting and that's Henry Kissinger. Oh, that's his mentor. He's 99 years old. I mean, he's going to outlive us. Yes, definitely. Kissinger. Because he's they really? drink some kind of baby placenta formula. <laughs> uh, they, they, they got all the formula. Yeah, they're drinking all <laughs> So here is, here is. They're uh, bathing in baby formula inside the builder. <laughs> you know, like the pores and the plebes starve outside. I mean, there are literally tents of homeless people like feet away from that hotel. If you just look to your left. Oh, just, really? Yeah, right under the right. There's a bridge about 50 meters from the hotel, and it's just filled with tents of homeless people. Uh, so, so here's another reporter. What's this guy's name? Uh, Josh Friedman. So he was there. Let's see what he has to say. Josh Friedman, you've been here since yesterday morning. Can, can you confirm this is the Bilderberg meeting? I can confirm that, but it really took me a while to confirm that. <laughs> the announcement about the meeting didn't come out till thursday afternoon so many of the participants had already been here i arrived early friday morning and i had to do some scouting around not just here but at elsewhere in dc to really confirm that it was happening here and at that point i really still hadn't confirmed it once i actually ran into uh admiral mike mullen retired chairman of the joint chiefs of staff and he was wearing his, his uniform his, i wouldn't call it his his uni i wouldn't call it no not his uniform he he, he had his uh, bilderberg badge on oh, and right, the, right. The, the, the uh white ribbon around the neck so that confirmed it a couple other things i, I got a photo of the dutch uh dutch prime minister so eventually yes i did confirm it but it was not in it's not like years past it really took a while right um the hotel itself has been lying to people who call and said it was reserved by some hotel some hong kong business group i had not called the hotel but i had heard that as when i showed up here early yesterday morning i spoke to some neighbors some people walking their dog who live in the area and they told me that they were told that yes the hotel was rented out for the weekend by the hong kong government at least that's what these, right, these right. neighbors told me Okay, and, and just like in one minute, why, why do you think it's significant to cover the Bilderberg meeting? What's happening here and what's wrong with it? I travel around the world covering geopolitics, and to me, this is first and foremost a geopolitics meeting, as it is every year. But I think this year is very significant for a few reasons. 
One, Bilderberg hasn't met since 2019. That's a long time. They've got a lot to discuss. A lot has obviously transpired since then. And then you also at this meeting have with the backdrop of everything going on in Eastern Europe with Ukraine and Russia and Finland and Sweden's bid to join NATO. You have the Finnish prime minister here, I believe. Uh, you have, of course, uh, Stoltenberg, the NATO chief. He's here very regularly. So you have the two of them presumably talking. I don't and if you look at the, the talking points or the important topics for the meeting, you see a lot of stuff coming up related to, you could say, the chaos in the world right now, the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainian ambassador of the U.S. apparently is here. She's on the list. So a lot of major, major geopolitical developments are, we would think, being discussed inside there with key players in the meeting. Where can people see the list of participants? BilderbergMeetings.org. They put the list up because they felt like they were subject to what they would call conspiracy theories because they were too secretive, right? I can't speak for them, but yes, it's only been in recent years that they've been putting out the list and the key topics, and they've added other things to the site, like the steering committee is now listed on the site, and you've got a little information about me all the meetings historically. So you could call that a little bit of transparency, but at the same time, based on the Bilderbergs I've covered, in the past, it seems like the meeting itself is becoming even more secretive. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Oh, so even though they're trying to pretend that they're transparent, they're actually becoming more secretive. Uh, so here's the agenda in his hand. Look at that guy. He looks like a Mike Myers latex character. Yes. <laughs> <from that. laughs> he really resembles Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, who was at the World Economic Forum, and he also resembles a cartoon villain reptilian shapeshifter i mean he looks completely evil but if you compare him to larry hogan they look very similar but larry hogan wasn't on the bilderberg participant list okay so michael tracy says this congratulations to jake sullivan kirsten Cin kirsten cinema peter thiel jens stoltenberg eric schmidt william burnt now i know who most of these people are Anne applebaum isn't she isn't she in a journalist? Uh, yeah, she's a, a huge neocon columnist at the Washington Post cheering for war with Russia. She's obsessed with war with Russia. And she's married to a veteran Polish diplomat, Radislav Sikorsky, who's also at the meeting. Christia Freeland, Michael Gove, the king of the Netherlands. <laughs> and of course, Henry Kissinger on what's no doubt been another successful Bilderberg weekend recent fans of peter thiel seem rather surprised that he's a bilderberg attendee given the nature of the right-wing causes he currently funds jokes on you uh this is at least his 12th meeting since 2007 few have ever can ev uh even evinced. evinced greater dedication to the cause of globalism that is the first time in my life i have ever seen the word evinced so Tip of the hat to Michael Tracy. Word of the day, evinced, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever I, oh, I feel so enervated when I don't know a word. Um, evinced. Hey, Surrey. Like evidence of, it means kind of, you know. Oh, is that it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to ask Surrey then. Uh, and here's uh, Fiorella Isabel. The bunch of billionaires from oil, pharma, NATO politicians, CEO, and high members from Palantir can all meet in secret via the Bilderberg Group to discuss matters involving millions of people, and no one is allowed to ask questions, and a few in the, and few in the media care to cover it. It's alarming. Now, Max, you covered it. You're there. We showed your reporting. Why do you think the media doesn't cover this? Well, many of them were inside. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore they're not allowed to cover it i mean you agree to chatham house rules when you go inside that building that means you're not allowed to quote anyone it's completely off the record and you can only refer to the meeting itself on background what is chatham house by the way what is chatham house rules is that like epstein island rules <laughs> like fight pretty club? much it's it's like a it's like a british think tank um and 
those rules have been our sort of traditional rules for meetings that are off the record. And so, I mean, literally, ABC, CBS, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, nobody covered this, Max? The CEO of Axel Springer Media Group, which is one of the major right of center media groups in Europe, where all employees have to swear an oath of loyalty to the transatlantic relationship between Germany and the U.S., as well as the special relationship between Germany and the state of Israel, was at the meeting. And Ax Axel Springer Media owns Politico, as well as Business Insider. You also had uh, Gideon Rockman, who is the chief foreign policy correspondent for Financial Times Inside, and Shashank Joshi, who is the chief military correspondent for The Economist. We also mentioned Ann Applebaum. So no, they don't seem very interested in this meeting, which I think is the most consequential meeting of the year and clearly the most secretive. Now, uh, the only person I'd ever heard talk about this kind of stuff, of course, was Alex Jones. And it's almost as if they let Alex Jones talk about this stuff to discredit anybody else who would talk about it, because then you yep. sound like Alex Jones, you know. Um, but this is real, right? So this is not one of those spoiler. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a spoiler alert. The, I, mean, I, did, I used to always hear people saying rich people uh, and and uh, oligarchs, establishment figures saying, oh, is there really you think there's a meeting where everybody gets together? The <laughs> And they decide how, where are these meetings happening? Well, I used to always say the meeting is called a session of Congress because those are all the dupes working for the oligarchs and they get together to plan everything and they're not planning it to help us. But now there's an actual meeting that you can't even get into or and no one's even going to report about and it's called the Bilderberg. And it's really happening. And uh, again, uh, no reporting about it. So... If if you're getting your news from corporate media, I, none of it's true. I, I don't even know how. Well, what else I can tell you. The reason why the country's in the play, way it is is because you believe the corporate media owned by the people who are screwing you. So that hotel is filled with people who are screwing you. And the people who are supposed to be looking out for the little guy, the reporters, the journalists, none of them are talking about it. And the other and the ones who should they're inside. <laughs> They're inside. I didn't, expect, I didn't expect that answer. So now you know that you're the ultimate chump if you get your news from the corporate news. And if you think the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are, are materially different, because they are not. They all work for those people. Wait, what was the, okay, the Alex Jones where he filmed them, you know, doing the cremation of care? It was I don't, like a corny ceremony. I don't know anything about that. So that, but that spot was like the Bushes would go to. That was, they're not allowed to talk business. I think they, they, like, that's one of their solemn vows of doing that whole ceremony. It's like, we're not talking about all this world shit. We're here to do, do blow and bang horse. And this one is one where they actually do this stuff. Like, this is such a bigger thing. Than whatever he snuck into on their recreation compound, you You're know. Oh, Alex Jones actually did sneak into something like this. Yeah, that's like what I first heard of him. And I thought I was like, this looks like just some stupid. It looks like these rich guys well, can't. Yeah, okay, what were you saying? Well, the, I was just going to give some history on how this meeting was kind of exposed. Go ahead. Uh, it was a reporter named Big Jim Tucker who has been kind of was considered a far right oddball reporter. He had a publication called Spotlight. And he was obsessed with the Bilderberg meeting throughout the 1970s. And he was dismissed as a conspiracy crank. Uh, and in 1999, he brought with him John Ronson, who was doing a book on extremists. And he got close to Big Jim Tucker, thought he was a crank in the beginning, but then watched as Big Jim Tucker figured out in Portugal, where the Bilderberg meeting was taking place, then at least infiltrated the ground of a hotel, and they watched as Tony Blair, Bill Clint, uh, I, I, uh, Peter Mandelson, the head of the World Bank, just started to come in out of nowhere, and he realized that Big Jim Tucker actually 
kind of was onto something. And then as they left, they were tailed on a country road alone by a car. They stopped their car, the car passed them, and the person in the car waited some hundred meters or so ahead and just stood there looking at them. And Ronson, this is all um, actually, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, he, he produced a special about it for UK Channel 4. It's called Secret R Rulers of the World, the Bilderberg Group. In any case, Ronson got spooked and he called the British embassy in Portugal and he said, I'm being tailed, I'm being threatened. They found things in their hotel room that were not there and had to move their hotel. And the British embassy said, Who, who's, who's, who's after you? Ronson said, the Bilderberg Group. And the reply from the embassy staff came back, that's way above our pay grade. We can't help you there. So uh, clearly the Bilderberg meeting was not just some far right conspiracy. It was actually something significant. And big Jim Tucker's big theory about it was that the Bilderbergs had taken down Margaret Thatcher's government because she opposed uh, EU integration and the common you know, EU currency for the UK and brought in this tool, John Major, who was then followed by Tony Blair, the ultimate kind of puppet of the global hovercraft elite. I can't speak, <laughs> I, can't, I can't speak to that, but uh, what I saw at the Bilderberg meeting uh, was completely tracked with what Ronson showed back in 1999 and a lot of what Jim Tucker was saying. Um, I actually remember years ago, I thought, oh, the Bilderberg, that's just some kind of conspiracy theory. Like, it's just like the Council on Foreign Relations, a bunch of rich people getting together. But no, it's very clear that what was taking place there was incredibly undemocratic, extremely corrupt. I mean, you had the heads of Shell and BP holding a meeting with elected officials, like the King of the Netherlands, the PM of the Netherlands. Uh, the, the PM of Finland, who wants to join NATO, this this complete uh, like AOC style puppet. It's like if AOC was going to take the world into an Arctic war. That's that's what you've got in Finland. Sana Marin, all these figures, and they're they're basically you know having secret meetings with the heads of industry as the world plunges into an energy crisis and a global recession. And then you have the CEOs of Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, on, holding a session with all of these figures on the post-pandemic world. And none of us can know what's taking place there by design because they want to be free to say things that they won't be nailed for in the press. And then you have all the reporters there who are just like part of the system. Doesn't um, the king of the Netherlands just throw, doesn't that sound like one of the names of the devil? They're like all hail <laughs> king of, <laughs> Nether yes. of the Netherlands. Of the netherworld. Well, you got all the the, the supposed conspiracy, the so-called conspiracy crowd. You know, Alex Jones. They always talk about bloodlines, yeah, and right. The place to blood, and then you've got these royals there who are like inbreds with who still have hemophilia. Well, I <laughs> oh. mean, all, all I, <laughs> also there's uh, if you just think about bloodlines, like we have like three generations of every president coming, like. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, he's a Kennedy. Like, even Kennedys I like are still a kid, like in a bloodline that everybody kind of, I guess, called Camelot. We kind of are into that over here. Yeah. I mean, Sasha Obama is vying for Chelsea Clinton's 2048 endorsement. Right now, yeah. So, so, so <laughs> like, are, are there people from, so like, Max, tell me, like the Hudson think tank, what, tell, is that, would that be part of something like that? What is that, by the way, the Hudson think tank? Somebody asked me what that is. I don't know what it is. I always confuse them with with Hoover. I got to make sure um, Hudson Institute is a neocon think tank in Washington. Um, that's actually um, Sa Sagar and Jetty comes out of there through one of their fellowship programs. So oh, as he, a reference point for the YouTuber world. Oh no, kidding! So that's the thing that he's a part that Sagar's a yeah, part. Yeah, and it's it's just a, a major neocon think tank funded by the arms industry by multinational corporations and i think they do get some government money as well and you know they promote u.s power to put it simply okay and regime change around the world but that's neocon i would say they're one of the key neoconservative institutions um they're founded by herman khan who is was the inspiration for stanley kubrick's dr strangelove character um while he was <laughs> 
at the Rand Corporation, which is sort of the semi-official think tank for the Pentagon. Yeah. And, and he was the founder of Godfather Pizza, both uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the great Herman Cohen. <laughs> yeah, man. COVID wasn't kind to that dude. Nine, nine, nine. Three page bill. Uh, all right. Well, what what else should we know about this, Max, that uh, I have we haven't said? Well, I'll tell you how I, I found the location or managed to get on site. I think they announced it out of nowhere. And uh, my friend and Gray Zone contributor, occasional Gray Zone contributor, Jeremy Lafredo, tipped me off about it. Or he said, Did you heard about the Bilderberg meeting? And I said, No. And so I said, Let's call every five star hotel in Washington and ask about it. And so we started doing that. And then I saw some rumors and in, in comment threads on Twitter about an Orient hotel. So I looked up the Mandarin Oriental said jeremy called the mandarin oriental he called them and that's when things started to get weird they were not being uh honest with him it was obvious and they told him that the hong kong government had booked out the entire hotel because what we were doing was we were trying to reserve rooms and if that was possible then the meeting wasn't there so i went down there it was very clear that this was the bilderberg meeting it was surrounded by cops gated off um I saw a guy come out in business casual dress. He looked like a transatlanticist. <laughs> he had that whole transatlanticist vibe and a lanyard. And so I tried, you know, questioning him and he just walked away. So then I went back later uh, and I, I guess Josh Friedman had already been there and had already confirmed the location because he got Admiral Mike Mullen on camera. This is the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who also refused to talk to him. And I just charged up in there I was wearing street clothes. I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And my intention was simply to blow up the location of the meeting, not literally just to put it on the radar of everyone, because there were still, I think, 48 to 72 hours left in the meeting. And I succeeded in doing that. My tweet went viral. You know, the goon squad gave away the game when they pounced on me. But I think that I could have done better, honestly, um, because I'm a white man and could have just put on a suit and if I just maybe had a lanyard on, maybe I could have gotten into the lobby. But it's important for media scrutiny to be applied to this particular conference and there was none. I mean, still, even after my tweet went viral, the international press showed no interest in it whatsoever. The Guardian published a piece by Charlie Skelton, who's covered the Bilderberg for years and he only got background information. Um, and there were no anti-war protests either. Ah. I mean, that should have been the base of protest for the entire anti-war movement because they were plotting the next phase of the Ukraine war and the famine that the global South will be plunged into very soon. The food shortages that are about to hit are on an apocalyptic level. That's according to I think the Sydney Morning News, I mean, yeah, apocalyptic food shortage threatens, says that's the Bank of England governor saying that. So they knew that going in. So on, I got there on the last day, it was departure day, and you just saw one black sedan or SUV after another lining up for the attendees. And I started talking to the chauffeurs and I said, who do you got? Who are you picking up? And they would hold up these signs with just four letters. Huh. R-A-C-H, or one guy held up a sign, M-I-C-H. So it was kind of codes, and I figured out it was the last, it was the first four. Um, letters of your last name? Letters of the last name of the person. And so M-I-C-H was Charles Michel. He is the head of the European Council, which has been coordinating these sanctions on Russia, which are causing the food shortages and the oil shortages and the fertilizer shortages to make it hard to grow food, et cetera. Basically, what leaders of NATO states are doing right now is trying to evade their own sanctions that they put on Russia. That's how insane it is. Charles Michel came out of the meeting uh, into a UN meeting, out of the Bilderbergs to a UN meeting where he uh, browbeat the Russian ambassador. And he told, blamed him and Russia alone for global the global food crisis, although it was the decision of the European Council 
to apply these crushing sanctions and to wage war on Russia. And we know Zelensky also was zoomed in in his green T-shirt, looking like Mike Dukakis in his tank to tell them to, to do this. And um, the Besnia, the Benzia, the UN ambassador for Russia, stormed out of the room. He was so angry with this accusation, which is so obviously false. And so I see that the Bilderberg meeting uh, is playing out in public now in a very dangerous way where instead of trying to resolve a food crisis that is going to possibly kill millions of the most vulnerable people in the world after all of the you know covid lockdowns already did that probably on a smaller scale instead of doing that they're coming up with excuses for it to save their own asses these 0.001% of elites uh, and they're not getting scrutinized. They're not being protested. They're not feeling the heat, but they will. They will. And, and actually, I should, I should qualify that. They are feeling the heat. The Estonian government has fallen, and the government of Boris Johnson may soon, it appears that it, he may soon fall in a no-confidence vote. And Boris Johnson has been a puppet for these very figures who are gathered there. We also saw Michael Gove, who's a close colleague in, in of Johnson and his government at the Bilderberg meeting. Johnson is one of the staunchest advocates of the economic war on Russia and the harsh sanctions that have caused an oil and food crisis in Europe. So the Bilderberg meeting, I, I, I don't know what happened there. We don't have the minutes, but it seems from the behavior of the individuals who emerged from the meeting that they sort of coordinated the demise of Europe and the immiseration of the global south. Yeah, I still can't believe what that what's happening is happening that I can't either. I can't either. And uh and 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 what Alex Jones is one of the only people talking about it like that's where we're at, a guy who is banned in right for all social media. Every social media pl yeah. platform. I mean, um, I can't believe this whole Ukraine situation and the Russia stuff. I can't believe they got most of the rest of the world to go along with it and but well not just europe not really the rest of the world and i but and who's being hurt by this the united states and europe and you, you know uh, if when there's you, you know, there's nine dollar gas in mendocino county here in california uh inflation's through the roof uh, and we're sending a stimulus to ukraine the most corrupt country in europe and we're not sending a stimulus to the united states we're sending it to the ukraine well, it's Go ahead. Transatlantic Pledge of Allegiance thing. Is that like Ukraine is basically a state in this transatlantic? Uh, it sounds like we're the actual government of like the larger thing here. And we're going to decide for like, so, you know, not a one world government, but the transatlantic, whatever NATO thing, that's how they look at it. You think like it's just one. I don't really. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the that's the purpose of uh, the Bilderberg meeting. It was founded as the Cold War began in 1954 by a Polish emigrant named Josef Redinger, who was very likely a British intelligence agent and a CIA or an OSS asset uh, who claimed to be representing multiple intelligence agencies himself. And his goal was to tighten the bond between Europe and the US, but essentially he was an anti-communist, an anti-socialist who wanted to uh, lean on the U.S. as a military protector of Polish nationalism specifically, but of uh, the aristocratic and upper class of Europe. And that's what we see taking place in Ukraine, where the U.S. is playing this, and, and NATO. I mean, NATO is basically the army of the, you can look at NATO as the army of the participants in the Bilderberg meeting. And what they're doing is keeping your maintain preventing Europe from becoming independent or acting on its own interests and making sure that Russia remains a permanent hostile enemy that is surrounded by bases and blockades and it's having a, a disastrous effect on the population of the world and specifically the population of Europe which is why Henry Kissinger who is the godfather of real politics has urged negotiations over Ukraine and the cessation of some territory 
in eastern Ukraine, as well as Crimea, which already voted to be a part of Russia, uh, to Russia or allowing those republics, Donetsk and Lugansk, to be independent. Kissinger doesn't want to see this crisis continue to such a cat catastrophic degree because it doesn't serve European interests, including, um, I think, the interests of the liberal class in Europe. They so, are going to face an enormous backlash from the far right if they continue to stand for election while pushing these policies that just starve their own populations and plunge them into what looks like a very dark winter this year. Well, do you just think they're afraid of a muscular foreign policy? <laughs> <laughs> so who does this? Who Whose interest is this in? I, I, I know it's the fossil fuel companies in the United States want to sell more liquefied natural gas to Europe. I get that. So that, is that what's really driving all this? I mean, look at what NATO is. It requires all of its member states to delegate, uh, to basically siphon uh, two to four percent of their social budget, of their entire budget, into military spending. So NATO is uh, essentially a lobby for the global arms industry. And right. uh, Andrzej Duda, the Polish president, was recently on uh, CNN with Fareed Zakaria. You know, the sort of like, like he's just like the ball washer for these guys. He never asked them a single critical question. And Duda said that I am prepared to give up our social welfare for this war uh, for Ukraine. I'm prepared to do that. Help me do that. I mean, he was begging to weaken this, whatever is left of the, um, you know, post Warsaw Pact Polish state to pay for uh, more soldiers and more armaments on the Ukrainian border. And that's what NATO really, truly represents, uh, as well as uh, a mechanism for promoting eternal hostility with a Russia that at, at one point in our lifetimes wanted to be a part of NATO itself. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, we said no. Uh, all right, that's the Bilderberg. Uh, you're not going to hear this on corporate media for whatever reason, but guys like Max went there. Guys like Max know what it's about. And now you all know what it's about. Uh, and now, you know, stop watching corporate media. I guess that's why you're watching this already. Here, we're doing stand-up comedy in Los Angeles on June 11th. And then we're going to Chicago, Sacramento, and San Diego on July 16th for the taping of my new special. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets. See you there.